A while ago, Ken Hackenthorne said no one needs a weapon-mounted light unless they are law enforcement or military. Well, Brian Melanowski probably would have benefited from one. Let's go ahead and explain and talk about it. What's up, Wolverines? Welcome back to the channel. My name is John Crump. I'm an investigative journalist, and I do investigative journalist stuff. This is John Crump News, which is my YouTube channel, my little slice of heaven where I do a lot of my reporting. I also do reporting on Amelian.com, so be sure to go ahead and read my stuff over there. Do me a big favor, like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps with the algorithm. Engagement is definitely key. All right, now let's talk about Brian Melanikowski. Ken Hackenthorne, speaking for Wilson Combat, said that no one needs a weapon-mounted light unless they are police or law enforcement, which sounds like an argument that the other side makes a lot. Remember, Wilson Combat also had Musab Ayub saying that if you are engaged in a defensive shooting, you should talk to the police without a lawyer, which is terrible advice. Don't do that, people. Please do not do that. Never talk to the police without a lawyer. Remember, they are there to arrest you and not to clear you. But let's get back to the weapon mounted light thing. Let's look at a real world example of why you need a weapon mounted light. And this information came out in a congressional hearing today. And they were talking about Brian Melanowski's killing. Basically, the ATF raided Brian Melanowski's house. Brian Melanowski was the executive director of the Clinton Airport. I wonder what he had on Hillary. And they were raiding his house because he was selling a lot of guns at a gun show, and they believed that he was acting as an FFL without having an FFL. So they raided his house. They ended up killing and shooting him because he confronted them with a firearm, because they did a no-knock raid. So basically, they knocked down his door, went in there with their guns drawn. He confronted them with a firearm because he didn't know that they were a cop. Or I think he probably didn't know that they were cops. And they shot and killed him. During a no-knock raid, the police knock down the door and they rush in. They don't knock on the door. They don't announce themselves. They just come in guns drawn and looking for engagement or looking to take down the person before they have time to react. Brian Melanowski grabbed his firearm, which did not have a weapon light, and confronted them. You can say that he should have turned on the lights, but here is the big thing, and this is why you need a weapon-mounted light. The police and ATF, before they went into Mr. Melanowski's house, they cut the power. So therefore, he could not see them, he could not identify the targets. All he knew was someone was breaking into his house. He had no lights, it was dark, and he couldn't see who these guys were. It was just that they were coming in with guns drawn, and that's all he knew. So when he confronted them, if he had a light, he would be able to identify them as police, and maybe he would still be alive today. But... He didn't because there was no power. There's no way for him to identify the people. Remember, this is a no-knock raid. This isn't something where they knock on the door and they yell, police or ATF, open up. They just ran down the door and run in and engage, which I'm against no-knock raids because of situations like this. So he didn't have a weapon mounted the light. He couldn't identify who these guys were. He just saw that they had guns and they were rushing into his house. It was dark. They had their weapon mounted lights, but he didn't have his. So they could identify him and they could see him, but he could not see them or identify them. I'm not saying that he did not know that they were ATF agents or cops. He could have, but the chances of him definitely knowing that they were ATF or cops would be substantially higher if he had a weapon mounted light. So this is one situation where the weapon mounted light would have come in handy, not just to identify the target that you want to shoot, but maybe identify targets that you do not want to shoot. This is why it is important for your home defense gun to be set up with a light, no matter 
what a boomer tells you. So you might be asking, why did the ATF choose to cut power to Malinowski's house? And the simple answer is they wanted to ensure that he did not see them. They wanted to maintain the level of surprise, even though it's a little bit more dangerous because it didn't allow him to identify them as ATF agents and they ended up having to kill him. So maybe if they didn't cut the power, he might still be alive today, but that is speculation. I can't say 100% what he would have done, but I think the chances are a lot higher of him being with us today and not dead if the government did not cut the power to his house before they did a no-knock raid. This guy was not a dangerous guy. He had a high-paying job, he had a prestigious job, and he didn't have a criminal record. So I don't get the need for the no-knock raid, but that's a story for another time. All right, guys, that is it. So I want you to stay ever vigilant. I want you to stay ever free. Keep in the fight. I am out of here. Wolverines, I'll see you guys later. Bye.